we are talking about the 2017 slasher movie Kane Hill. It's a relatively low budget British movie directed and co-written by Jean Falaise. Now the story here is a tale as old as time. Yes indeed, you've heard this story many a time before. It's the old classic of a group of filmmakers decide they're going to go and film in an abandoned mental asylum and obviously stuff goes wrong. Oh, I wonder how many times we've seen this basic setup before. Quite a few, let me tell you. Now the idea being that there has been a variety of people that have gone missing and apparently there's this famed lunatic there called Chester who, according to legend, you know, roams the halls, etc. Now, I'm not quite sure what the actual documentary they're meant to be filming is actually about. There's no mention of ghosts or hauntings or anything like that, so I don't know if it's meant to be on this guy itself or whether it's actually just meant to be on the hospital. It's never really kind of made clear because it's it, the, the documentary filmmakers seem to dismiss any claims of uh, uh, this Chester as a kind of a, a, a lunatic, etc. Anyway, so they, the first hour of this movie is split between the getting to know the characters, getting to know this kind of like, uh, this crew. Uh, then we have a kind of a Blair Witch style of interviewing a few kind of locals. And then we kind of get into the kind of the actual asylum itself. And then you'll start sort of seeing, you know, is there something else there? There's a few kind of things that are just out of focus maybe. Is there, you know, some sort of like speaking stuff in the kind of the peripheral there. And then the last kind of 20 minutes as when obviously all the action happens. So far, so generic. So let's talk about what works with this movie first of all. I've got to say uh, the location here is going to be the main plus point here. It's actually filmed in this kind of very gothic looking old building. And I think it really does add some kind of credence to this kind of classic style kind of... Uh, uh, you know, spooky kind of narrative that the movie kind of, the actual, sh the actual movie shoot really kind of portrays across on screen here. And now this isn't a found footage movie, despite the fact that a lot of these type of films are. And, um, you know, it's nice to see a movie that is shot in a traditional style kind of camera angles and stuff like that with a, you know, more structured narrative than a, than a found footage that's these, most of these are. So it kind of makes a nice change on that. Um, the acting. Some of the acting here I, I quite liked. I think the, the guy who's the producer, guy with a shaved head, does a real genuine kind of, uh, you know, uh, performance here as a guy who would really does seem like he's a manager, so to speak, of the producer. Uh, and I kind of quite liked his performance. And a couple of other ones who I thought were pretty good here. And the, the, the story is, is fairly easy to follow. It's not a particularly kind of a convoluted plot or anything like that. Um, the actual killer us himself looks suitably menacing. He's a massively tall guy, you know, in the kind of the vein of Texas Chainsaw Massacre and stuff like where there's kind of a leather mask with a, you know, a Negan style kind of baseball bat with nails and stuff in. But what isn't so good? So, some of the cast here I feel are a little weak, and unfortunately the two main characters I feel are the weakest here. Uh, the female lead called Mary um doesn't seem to be the most confident of actors and uh we have a, of the director character as well um he's not he, he he's his performance i think is meant to be like a leading man but he kind of comes across as quite sleazy there's a scene where he's trying to kind of get in the pants of this one female member of the crew and i, I think it's meant to be kind of romantic but it comes across as somewhat predatory uh and yeah, there's a couple of yeah. The acting's a little bit kind of hitting me. It's not it's not terrible, but there are there are better performances out there. Shall we, shall we say? So that's the first thing. The second thing for me is um, it wastes a little bit too much time before we get to any kind of uh, real supernatural. Not not even supernatural. Not until we get to any of the kind of like the, the horror elements. I mean, it's the last kind of like. 15, 20 minutes, and it's a little bit too late then. I think I feel it should have started a little bit earlier. There's a little bit too much time before we can get to any real horror elements here. Um, unfortunately for me, the the actual horror element is the weakest part of this film as well. Because I, if, I feel it ch chucks logic out the window. There just seems to be... The acting really takes a dive. So, for, so for example, when, we, when, when our crew first, first discovers the first body... They are way too calm and collected about it. Uh, their, their, their reactions simply don't make sense. What they do next simply doesn't make sense. There's no sort of sense of urgency. Unfortunately, it kind of takes a dive. The killer himself as well, although he kind of looks quite menacing, look a little bit deeper. I mean, the guy is wearing very clean shop-bought clothes. 
He's got like a tattoo and stuff. And what does this what does this slasher do? Is he out down the tattoo parlor getting uh, you know his, his tats done and stuff like that? He doesn't look quite as like he's been kind of living in this kind of abandoned hotel for the you know for the last kind of like thirty years or whatever. He looks like he's just a big guy who's dressed up as this. Uh, they should have just dirtied him up a little bit and maybe kind of like I don't know just the kind of like the the, the tribal tattoos and stuff were a bit like. This isn't kind of like the Wild West. This is just like some sleepy English village. Um, so it just kind of like a little bit of attention to detail, uh, I felt, would have gone a long way. The kills as well mostly happen off screen. There's a little bit of kind of like blood across the neck of a couple of things. And there are there are some prosthetic bodies which which look okay. But there's no actual real sort of good kills on screen. So if you're wanting the kind of... Uh, you know, good gore shots on, on on that. You'll kind of be a little bit disappointed. And like I said, I think that the, the horror element was a little bit too squidged into the, like in the last kind of 15, 20 minutes where I felt like it should have been uh, maybe kind of spaced out a little bit more and kind of um, just done it a little bit more of a, a, a believable way and kind of kind of ramped up the tension a little bit because I just didn't think it worked very well. Now, um, the actual technical side of this, going back to some parts, is I feel all, are all pretty good. I think the camera work here is good, the lighting is good. There's a couple of audio audio issues, audio mixes and stuff like that, which I didn't think was, was particularly well done. But it looks like it's professionally made but kind of behind the camera. So overall, it's a pretty much meh, mediocre, generic, average kind of slasher film. So if you are a huge slasher film and you, and you just want to watch every kind of slash you can get your hands on, then there are a lot worse than this. I will say that, you know. But there's nothing that makes this movie stand out, I don't think. I mean, it kind of purports to be a, 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 a true story. But, um, you know. Anyway, but uh, it's, it's, it's just very generic. I mean, the story is, is really just a kind of like a rehash of, of anything, anything, any number of movies that you've seen before. And there's no nothing in this movie that kind of sets it apart. No flourishes, no artistic flourishes that I feel really work. The acting is a little bit of a mixed bag. The killer is kind of a little bit disappointing, um, but never to the. It's never terrible, but just kind of uh, okay at best, I would say. So yeah, if you're a complete like slasher maniac and you just want to watch every single slashes. You'll probably get along with this one. It'll probably be watchable, but I don't feel it's it's essential viewing for anyone who's a little bit more discerning with their kind of like their horror movies. So as such, I will give this movie a simple, box standard five out of ten, an average movie. So there you go. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I shall look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.